ever pondered about the real value of the wine you're drinking? Well, let me paint a picture for you. Recently, a shopping trip turned into a curious encounter. A bottle of Appassionante wine with a 4.2 rating on Vivino was discovered sitting on a supermarket shelf with a price tag of just $8. Quite the steal, right? All nine bottles available were quickly snatched up. But here's where things get interesting. A representative of the brand happened to be in the same store and shared some intriguing information. This very same Appassionante wine was being sold in another supermarket chain for a whopping $60. Quite a difference, wouldn't you say? This unexpected revelation sparked a deep dive into the wine industry, unearthing a world where not everything is as it seems. For centuries, there's been a narrative that wine is a drink for the affluent and sophisticated. But is it, really? As we peel back the layers, it becomes clear that this industry is riddled with eyebrow-raising practices. The story of the Appassionant wine is just the tip of the iceberg. Beneath the surface, there's a labyrinth of strategies and tactics designed to create a certain perception about wine. The global wine market is worth over $300 billion. With such high stakes, it's no surprise that some are willing to twist the rules to carve out a slice of this lucrative pie. But at what cost? The wine industry is not just about fermenting grapes, it's about perception. The labels, the ratings, the price tags, they're all part of a meticulously crafted marketing strategy designed to make you believe you're getting something extraordinary. But are you really? From chemical enhancements to private labeling, from manipulated ratings to ambiguous wine tasting terms, the industry has a bag of tricks that's far from empty. Even legal loopholes are exploited, allowing wines from different regions to be blended and labeled as if they're from a single prestigious location. But the question remains, how far does this deception go? If you're curious and want to learn more about the deceptive practices in the wine industry, give us a like, share our video, and don't forget to subscribe. Dive deeper into the world of wine with us. Let's uncork the truth together. Let's take a look at a notorious figure in the wine world, Rudy Kurniawan. Born in Indonesia, Rudy moved to the United States in the late 90s and quickly made a name for himself in the wine community. With a discerning palate and a seemingly limitless budget, he began collecting rare and expensive wines, eventually amassing a cellar worth millions of dollars. His reputation grew, and he started hosting extravagant tastings, sharing his coveted bottles with the elite of the wine world. People were enamored by his generosity and his extensive knowledge of wine. Rudy was living the high life, rubbing shoulders with the rich and powerful, and he became a trusted figure in the industry. But behind this facade of sophistication and wealth, a dark secret was brewing. Rudy was not just a collector of rare wines, he was also a master forger. He was buying up ordinary wines, refilling the empty bottles of high-end wines with these cheaper alternatives, and then reselling them at astronomical prices. The extent of his deception was mind-boggling. His operation was so sophisticated that he even reproduced the labels, making sure they looked aged and authentic. It's estimated that he sold tens of millions of dollars worth of these counterfeit wines. But like all great cons, Rudy's came crashing down. His deceit was eventually uncovered in a dramatic sting operation. A raid on his home revealed a counterfeiting workshop complete with thousands of wine labels, corks and bottles. The wine world was left reeling. The man they had trusted, admired and even envied was a fraud. Rudy was sentenced to 10 years in prison in 2013 for his crimes, marking the downfall of one of the most notorious figures in the wine world. His story serves as a stark reminder of the length some people will go to deceive others and profit from the perception of luxury and exclusivity. Rudy's tale serves as a stark reminder of how perception can be manipulated in the wine industry. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Rudy's story. Comment below and be sure to share this video with your wine-loving friends. But Rudy is just one man. What about the industry as a whole? Well, the wine industry is a complex web of practices that often seem more like sleight of hand than genuine craftsmanship. Let's peel back the labels and see what's really going on behind the scenes. For starters, a common practice in the industry is the use of chemical alterations. That's right, chemistry is not just for laboratories, but also for wineries. Additives like Mega Purple, a concentrated grape juice, are often used to enhance the color and flavor of the wine, transforming a lackluster bottle into a seemingly high-quality vintage. Then there's the practice of private labeling. 
This is when the same wine is sold under different labels and at different price points. It's all about perception. If you see a wine with a fancy label and a hefty price tag, you're likely to perceive it as superior, even if it's the same as the cheaper bottle right next to it. And what about those ratings you see on wine apps? They're user-generated, which means they can be easily manipulated. Some wineries have been known to pay for positive reviews, artificially boosting their ratings and in turn their sales. It's a digital age spin on the old practice of word of mouth. Now let's talk about wine tasting. We've all heard terms like oaky, full-bodied and robust thrown around. But do these descriptors really tell us anything about the wine? Or are they just buzzwords? Part of a vocabulary carefully crafted to make you feel like a connoisseur, even when you're just sipping a simple glass of red. Don't get us wrong, there are honest winemakers out there who put their heart and soul into every bottle. But it's also important to understand that the industry is not just about grapes and fermentation. It's about perception, marketing and sometimes manipulation. These practices are all part of a grand performance to sell you an experience, not just a bottle of wine. If you found these insights intriguing, subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into the fascinating world of the wine industry. Wine fraud isn't a new phenomenon. It's as old as the industry itself. Even in ancient Roman times, deception in the wine market was rampant. Emperor Nero, known for his extravagant lifestyle, enacted laws to combat counterfeit wines. He understood that the integrity of the wine was as important as the taste. Fast forward to today. And we see that the problem persists. Some modern laws allow for the blending of wines from different regions, yet these wines can still be labeled as originating from a single prestigious location. This legal loophole is just one of many that the industry exploits, contributing to the ongoing issue of wine deception. It's not just about the taste, the aroma, or the color. It's also about perception, marketing, and yes, deceit. So the next time you're sipping on a glass of wine, remember it's not just about what's in the bottle, but also what's behind it. If you found this information useful, give this video a like, and don't forget to share it to spread awareness about wine deception.